Welcome to the frog dissection. Today you'll need your standard dissection tools as well as a tray and a frog. All right, so let's start on the dorsal side and you can feel that that frog has nice smooth skin. Remember amphibians can breathe through their skin as well as through lungs. And the frog has webbed feet for swimming. And you can see the difference between the forearms, which are much shorter, and then the hind legs, which are used for jumping and swimming. On the head, there's a nictitating membrane over the eye to protect the eye. And then behind that is a tympanic membrane, and that functions as the frog's eardrum. So again, nictitating membrane and then tympanic membrane. And you should certainly be learning about these as you read through your lab worksheet. And then on the nose of the frog, on the snout, you can see two external openings and those are the nostrils. So the frog has three body regions, a throat, a thorax, which is a chest region, and then the abdomen. And of course we talked about the difference between the forearms and the hind legs. If you take a look at the digits on the forearms, the toes, there are four. And then there's a thumb that's a little bit more powerful, and remember that thumb is used for amplexus, for grasping the female. And on the hind feet, you can see there are one, two, three, four, five digits. So four on the forearms and five on the hind legs. Okay, we're going to see some structures inside the frog's mouth. So you can try to pry the jaw open a little bit, but it's probably pretty stiff. So do your best. And then we're also going to make a little cut on either side of the jaw. Cut back just a little bit so that we can cut through that jawbone and open the frog's mouth a little bit wider so we can see all of the structures inside. So again, just a little bit on both sides. Then open up the mouth, and you can see the tongue right there in the front. Big muscular tongue. I'll try to zoom in as much as I can. So on the roof of the frog's mouth, you have maxillary teeth, a row of maxillary teeth, and then there are two nodule-like vomerin teeth in the front, and all of those are simply for holding prey. They don't use their teeth for chewing. And then on either side of the vomerin teeth, you can see the internal nostrils. Those are the holes that uh, go directly into the external nostrils that you saw before. And then you can also see two holes at the back of the mouth. Those are openings to the eustachian tubes. And if we take a look at the tongue here, this tongue can extend out very far and it attaches in the front of the mouth in order to flip out much more quickly than we can do with our tongue. And then in the back there are two openings to vocal sacs which help the frog make noise and then a glottis in the center. Okay, we are going to start our incision of the frog so that we can look at some of the internal anatomy. The first incision we're going to make is shaped like an eye. You can see the explanation of how to do that in your lab worksheet. 
but you want to cut up the middle from the frog's anus to the chin and then you're going to cut across and make an eye shaped incision and then we'll remove all of that skin so that you can see the muscles underneath. And then we will cut down through the skin of the legs as well so you can see the muscles within those hind legs. So again, we have the abdominal muscles and then the strong hind leg muscles that allow for swimming and jumping. And if you've ever eaten frog legs, that's what you're eating. Okay, now we're going to cut through that muscle layer on the abdomen and the chest. You can use your scalpel for this. The chest has a rib cage because a frog is a vertebrate. So that's going to be a little bit thicker, but the abdomen is very soft, so be careful not to cut too deeply. And then you'll make that horizontal cut again to make the eye-shaped incision just like you did on the skin. And I prefer to cut up through the rib cage with the scissors so that you don't accidentally cut down into some internal structures. This provides for a little bit more control. And then you can cut all of that rib and muscle layer off so that we can have a nice clear view of the internal anatomy. Okay, and we're all done. So let's take a look at some of these structures, and again, you're going to want to read on your lab worksheet as well. First, find the fat bodies, which are yellow spaghetti-shaped branched structures, usually near the back of the frog, and those help to keep the frog warm. So. There'll be different amounts of fat bodies depending on where and when your frog was killed. And then the top structure of the frog, the largest structure, is the liver. And there are two lobes to the liver. It looks like three, but there are only really two lobes to the liver. And that helps to filter waste. And then the heart is the triangular shaped structure right above the liver. And 
And then underneath the liver, you can see the two spongy lungs. This is the frog's left lung. And those would expand when the frog breathes. And this is the right lung. Your lungs look very similar to those. And then also underneath the liver is the sac called the gallbladder, and that produces and stores bile, to, which is responsible for breaking things down in the digestive system. And you can also see underneath that liver the curved stomach with blood vessels running to it. And it's very hard because it has a lot of muscles. And the, the stomach is, needs to move food and pump food down into the small intestine through the pyloric sphincter. Okay, so here I took out the liver. You can see it a little bit closer. And then you can also see the gallbladder underneath that sac. And I took that out so that we could see a little bit more easily. So again, this is the stomach, followed by the pyloric sphincter, which is that valve right there. And then food passes from there into the small intestine, which is all wound up and takes up very little space for as long as it is, as does yours. And then that follows down into the large intestine, which is just a, a wider tube responsible for absorbing water. So here's a diagram of some of the things we've found so far to help you with your lab worksheet diagrams. Okay, and let's continue. Underneath the stomach, you can see the spleen, which is a little round structure located in the connective tissue called the mesentery, holding it in the body cavity. And then right near where the stomach meets the small intestine is the pancreas. Pancreas secretes insulin to regulate the frog's blood sugar. And then if you follow the stomach up towards the mouth, that's the esophagus. And then if we move the stomach aside, you'll see the dark kidneys on either side of the frog. And those are dark because they have a lot of blood in them because they are responsible for filtering waste out of the blood and then passing it out as urine. So there's one on that side and then there's one on the right side as well. And then there's a bladder that the kidneys filter urine into. My frog's bladder is pretty empty at the moment. And that will all empty out into the cloaca. So again, here are some of the structures we just looked at, the spleen, kidney, and the bladder. And then I actually removed the stomach of the frog by just taking the, cutting the stomach at the top and the bottom, and then emptying out the contents. And you can see there's all kinds of insects and flies in my frog's stomach that are whole because the frog does not chew its food. So all of the digestion happens after the stomach in the small intestine and the large intestine of the frog. And that's where we will leave off for today. I hope you enjoyed it.